here today with John John, former Bronxky Beat vocalist. Come on, don't leave me, darling. Um, really cool to have you on today. I just uh, thought I'd uh, go into kind of the early days at first. Um, and kind of uh, go over how, how it all started really. You you joined uh, after Jimmy Somerville, um, which was about, was it 85 around that time? Yeah, about that time. Uh, yeah, I was uh, 24 and uh, I, uh, it was, a, it was, it all fell into place. It was like a jigsaw and uh, how, how I saw my life at 16, I kind of saw it as this plateau I had to fill in. And these were just bits of the jigsaw that just went in. I was so lucky to find the bit that went in. It was like, a, 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 you know, come out of the air. And, um, well, it, years and years back when I first got to know Larry was in South End, And uh, I met him in a little gay pub in South End on Sea called The Cliff. And we got on really well, and he was going out with his with our manager, oh. Anthony. And um, so, when th things moved on, uh, we had a friend called Jill. I've met, I've been with Jill. She's like my second sister since year year nineteen sixty one. So I've known her for sixty sixty odd years, you know. Oh. So um. And she did the first cover of um, Small Town Boy. She did the, the emblem. Oh, which really? Got sold quite a lot. So that's a bit of history that hardly anybody knows. Which For sure, nice. yeah, I didn't know that. And I still see her now. We have great fun together. So oh, anyway, so we're all in this house together. And uh, Jill lived in a little bed set. I lived down the road and... Uh, uh, I met these people through Jill, who went to the art college in South End Tech to do fashion. I was sort of, um, I, I, uh, it was a, we all came together at this pub. So we, Jill met uh, Larry and Anthony, and then I came in and met uh, Larry. Sounds like traffic, doesn't it? Yeah, sorry, yeah, you're back now. Yeah, the signal went <laughs> then. But um yeah, so you so you did know the guys are quite That's <laughs> right. So when so when we all sort of split up and went to our various destinations to London and then the other lot went to Newcastle. I followed the ones up to Newcastle, which was not a really good quite hard lean up. Uh, it was about Three or four years and then I was coming down to London and seeing Larry and seeing and hearing Bronsky beat for the first time in this in this um in this squat. Wow. <laughs> I know. And it was like twenty floors up in the air, it was like in Camberwell. Yeah. So I was listening to Jimmy and Steve had let met Larry then and they became uh two an item. And um then they met Jimmy. I'm not quite sure where they met Jimmy. I think it was in the bar or something. And uh, they asked, he says, oh, give it a crack at singing. So anyway, I, but after a while, they got the set together. And um, I, I heard it for the first time. Anthony called me up. He says, oh, come and listen to the band. And I was blown away by Jimmy's voice. It was just... incredible to hear it roar like that it was okay. wow. so then they went on the road and they did all this that and the other and uh they got their record deal an amazing deal they got from london records and um they uh they they were up there and they went on tour i was the lead front man who came out to um uh announce them 
And here you go, Bronsky beard like this, you know. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> ironic, ironic. So That's bad, yeah. Time went on, and as um, I was down one time from Newcastle at London, and we were, were at the BBC um, doing Wogan show, and Jimmy t didn't turn up for the for the camera rehearsal. Oh, yeah. So, and they were doing, it ain't necessarily, no, I feel love, I feel love with, um, uh, God, what's his name? Mark Oven. Uh, that's him. <laughs> so he, he didn't turn up. He, Jimmy didn't turn up. He had gone to Paris and said, I'm quitting the band. Wow. But they said, I wanted to do this number because all under contracts were doing. Anyway, oh. and she said, you're going to have to go up and do the rehearsal. So there I was singing the rehearsal, well, mining. And I had a um, mark beside me. <clears throat> And I was just sort of being Jimmy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know, I wish they had recorded that. That would have been something else. That really would have. That kind of all began. Um, Anthony was was more on the ball than the, the boys in the band. So he knew what the manager. So that was, uh, but by the end of the week, I was kind of in the studio writing some songs and see if I could um, hack it. Wow. I mean, it was. It, it, it all sounds so easy that I just went in, and I, I mean, I'm not the greatest singer of all, you know. There was there's up plenty of other singers around. It's just that we were a close unit, and 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 I love Steve and Larry a lot as friends, and and also Anthony, who I still uh, chat with, is in Nova Scotia. Oh, and and so. Uh, the record company really didn't like me, so Anthony had to sort of, uh, Anthony had to persuade them oh, yeah. that I was going to go up, come up to the mark. And all we did was these three songs, which were, my uh, <laughs> brain. So that's that's uh, they were okay. Um, I think it was a run from love song I did actually that I've got on tape somewhere and oh. a couple of things were uh, just gone. Oh in my dreams I wrote in my dreams. He's asking questions that plays on his mind. He's killing time telling of his life, telling stories of his life. They heard that. Oh I love that one, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. We managed to do some rehearsals in a in a studio, uh, not not a posh studio. It was up above a station. It was uh, very cheap, and that's where I uh, hear yeah, that perfect beat came out. We were just wow. jamming around, and I was going beat 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 hit that perfect hit that perfect, and that's how it happens. Wow. We're going, oh, this is really good fun, you know, not thinking that. Oh, this is going to be go around the world singing. Yeah. Uh, we got it into a studio and there it started to build and build and build and build. And they did such a brilliant job on it, Steve and Larry. They were they're so good at creating the music and the rhythm and the uh, and everything that goes into a track, uh, which you know, I know a bit about music and how to compose my my own, but I, I certainly not up to their standard. And Larry was a master at, at uh, programming. It was absolutely fantastic. Okay, yeah. his, his life went on to do amazing things. Anyway, so that so the, the concept of of this beat boy thing, we thought, oh, okay, so this is searching. It's it's about me, if you know what I mean. It's uh, you know, it's, it's all about me, really. Is that really? <laughs> and, and the record company said, okay, we will give it a go with this song. When we'd managed to get it into a demo form by then, and uh, so it got released. And I was in the paper as this new fella they'd found yeah. and, and and there you go it was uh, just took off and I was just I, I was kind of amazed but um kind of thought this is my destiny it's what's happening is just yeah oh I'm writing I'm not I'm not being Jimmy I'm just being me 
Exactly. It's such an iconic, I mean, I love that you both brought something completely unique. You know, you weren't trying to be Jimmy, you were completely your own entity. And, and I love the kind of energy you brought to the band and hit that perfect beat has always been my favorite. You know, I, I that's my favorite Bronxy beat song. And it's, it always sort of makes me feel good and it never gets old, you know, it's quite an amazing, uh, amazing track, you know. I know, I can see it all coming in. Uh, Nowhere it's going to be used. Australia, they're using it for a couple of years. In Ireland, they but um, no, it was it 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 really was a a good time because everybody was so up, and I got to know Jim really well. We we you know if I was to meet him now, it would be I would I would cuddle him and you know we'd uh -huh. say, what are you doing? You know, I'd just give him a you know because there's no animosity between us you know That's true. so that all that was kind of like a prequel to all what happened after we um we did perfect beat um when it took off and when it took off in this country it took three months because i think we released it in something like october or november wow. maybe november or something and it hung around in the top of the charts for ages and ages and ages and it was slowly going up the charts, slowly, slowly. And then we got top of the pops and then it went up, up, up. It went, you know, I thought it was going to get to number one, but hey ho. In those days, to number one in those days, you had to, you know, quite a lot of records, maybe 350,000, 400,000. You could wow. get up there, yeah. So, so when we got the first um, inkling of we've sold 250,000 in this amount of time, and then you just saw it shoot up the charts. I think it went to 16, and then bang, it went to number three. I was thinking, oh Christ, you know, this is going to be. And I think we've done top of the pops again with that perfect beat. Can you hear those signals <laughs> in and out? Yeah. yeah. How was the top of top of the pops experience? Was that quite quite uh, scary, or was it? <laughs> so top of the pops was uh, a great experience. Seeing it as a kid and um, watching it all my life. So I first <clears throat> saw my friend Alison Moyo. She was uh, doing Yazoo, and they got they were in the charts. So I'm looking at her. I mean, I knew she was in the band because we were both brought up in Basildon and I'm, you know, I've become friends with her. So we'd all be crying. Oh, my God, he's amazing. Oh. <laughs> it was just, you just like, oh, that voice. Oh, my God. <laughs> so then I saw her. Then I started to see, you know, Depeche Mode had already been there. So I'm thinking, God, it's going to be my turn. So yeah. when I went, when I actually went to do Top of the Pops, it was very surreal. Yeah. And I just, I just, hold on, you know, I just thought, just be yourself. You go into the studio, you do uh, run throughs because I want to get things right, the lights and um, mainly the lights. And then in the afternoon, and you're not allowed to leave the building, in the afternoon, you start doing the recording. So f for a, about an hour, they do the show. So you come up and do your thing and go on. And uh, not leave there till about six or seven o'clock or something. Okay. A very tiring day, but the BBC was fun. There was, uh, there was always something going on. It was uh, quite interesting. But as I say, I just took it as professionally as I could. You know, I just, Doing it to the cameras, it was like second nature. Yeah, no, I yeah. can tell. I, it, when I watch you, it's kind of, it's, I've always loved it. That's what got me into Bronx UB. I remember my dad showed me hit that perfect beat uh, for the first time. And I remember that was like when I was a kid and I thought, oh, this is great. And, you know, instantly I love your voice and your charisma. And it's, uh, yeah, I think you, you like you say, you were just yourself and it, 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 uh, it worked, you know, that was the yeah, best. Yeah, thank God it worked. Yeah. I mean, I was very lucky. I, I had the, one of the top, I had the top everything uh, uh, beside me. We, I, even our uh, publisher was uh, Elton John's publishing company. So 
with with all with the writing uh, we got a very good three ways I mean usually out of 99% of the whole lot usually with bands you won't be on that higher thing no you'd be cut down and then this chunk of da, 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 da. yeah it could be very uh, you know they don't get much no. however you know we struck gold so there we we were off into Europe going to various different countries in one like say two or three countries in one day just to go straight into the studio do the thing rehearsal do the thing come out go back to the helicopter go to the next thing <clears throat> back to London shows uh so it was a bit crazy but uh yeah. you know I was young. It was good fun. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Three countries in one day. I, I, I expect no one would have expected that. That's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was something else, actually. Yeah. yeah. So but you so, saw. Uh, I guess, and you saw a lot of. Uh, Do you have any good experiences in any of these countries? Did any really stand out to you? Some of the experiences you had. Uh... Do you know what it was? Is that when you go to the countries, you could be anywhere. <clears throat> You could be in the middle of London, you could be, you know, it just, you don't kind of get the the grips of the city. Berlin, we, we actually stayed there for a few months and was writing stuff in Berlin in Hansa studio, which is very big studio. It was out over the wall wow. uh, at the time because the wall was there and you get the guards there looking at you with their gun. You know. But there was in the in Hansa, there was a huge window in the in the vocal booth that you could look out. So there, there we are, just giving them moonies. And uh, oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, right. and yeah, is that, that really fun. is that where you film where you recorded uh, Truth Dare Double Dare? <laughs> it was, yeah, that's right, yeah, it was. That's where we wrote and uh, yeah, did most of it there. Oh wow, God. and it's and yeah, interesting so it's, about the album is that it was being written as it was being put down. Usually, with the band, you would go on and uh, get these deep within your DNA, so you have no question about the melody or the the sound of the of this thing. It was just going bang down, write it, bang down. Yeah. So it was quite an intense moment. Um, it was I didn't realize what we were actually doing at the time until uh, until years later when I analyzed it and thought wow that was a very uh, that was a very dodgy thing to do because you know my vocals on that are just they're not great they're not the greatest things because they uh, to me that the album is like a demo is it really? <laughs> and, and, and and I say that because as I was just explaining what happened with with this, the the writing of the album, some of the songs came to, together quite quickly, and there was a lot of money spent on the album. That was a, a lot of money spent on the was album. Was it really? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, we were in the top uh, um, uh, studios. The one in London we were in that was in Primrose Hill. I can't quite remember what it's called now, but it was just lush in there. It was just like the best. And like Tina Turner would come. There was uh, Aha who was recording there. You know, it was that type of place where yeah, you could just hop yeah. into any of them, you know. <laughs> That's and, crazy. <clears throat> and you're going, hey, I know you. I know you. <laughs> and you, you were telling me before you've, you've been to some pretty crazy parties, haven't you, with different people? Elton. Well, no, I mean it was just it was just one big roller coaster, you see. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you'd go out, and you know the next night you'd go out, and uh, it yeah. was like it was just one big crazy. I, I, I could have chosen not to do that and just become like a uh, like a uh, an angel singing, you know, not yeah. so you don't speak to anybody during the day, and the only time you you sing is when you're doing your gig, you know. Mm. 
And uh, so we just enjoyed ourselves. We just enjoyed ourselves. So so when you go to these countries, you go and do your thing and then you end up in a, in a club. So it could be any blooming club in the world. Yeah. It's just that they're just all speaking a different language. <laughs> true, so, yeah. And we were always in present. You know, the, we were always come in, come in and the we were free drinks. And, you know, you come right. and have this, these seats, you know, it was really top, top notch. Yeah. I mean, a few times in Italy, well, we'd had to have um, actually that video you showed me the other day was in Italy. And I thought, oh, oh, that's the place where they had the giant music festival in Faro. Wow. Wow. Oh, Bari, Bari in southern Italy. So they got crowds and crowds of people go there and you have to walk to to the studio through the square and in the square it's just packed full of people because there's not just us there's duran duran there's this that and the other and all. Yeah. Uh, so the only way to get through this car these the people is with the guard the police guards who have guns so you're in the middle being um being guarded by these police and going through these people, these mad people. It was horrific. Yeah, that must yeah. have been quite weird. It was a huge venue as well. You could see it, it was a huge venue. Right. So so there you go. I mean it was um I was rocking it. Yeah. Another country. And then the money started coming in. We got a, a big advance. Um, I got a £10,000, which was quite a lot of money then. Wow, yeah. Um, £10,000 advance. So I got a, I wrote 10 songs. I wrote a few more, actually. 10 songs for the album and um, a thousand quid for each song. I mean, my first single, I mean, that wasn't bad. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's nice. Nice to hear of a band that weren't kind of screwed over by the by the companies because you hear of so many which you know. Well, you say that my life's been a complete mess ever since I joined oh. that band. <laughs> so <it>. trying to <laughs> get hold of money that is owed to you is a is a full time job. I'm l lucky to have somebody I know who is onto it and he's been doing it for years and years and and the money trick was in, you know, but. It is a full time job. It's mm. no doubt about it. And there's something going on with all these publishing companies. There's, there's a, whether it's my um, sexuality or not, I, you know, they, they won't give uh, like a, they won't give the money to a queer. Mm. That's what you're thinking. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's a, yeah, it's a bit. Uh, it's a bit dark, all that, because I've had my, uh, you know, you get your identity stolen as well. So money is getting passed like this. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so so there we are uh, on the road, and yeah, if you want to ask yeah. me a question. Yeah, oh. I think. Well, kind of on that subject, um, I guess you were, you were quite a daring band in the 80s to be, you know, openly gay and, uh, you know, talking quite politically about the subject. And uh, that that's something that always set Bronxy Beat apart from from the rest, I guess, uh, particularly the line, you know, in Hit That Perfect Beat, uh, hiding from that danger that's been sent from hell. Just I always thought that was a very poignant kind of a uh, statement, you know, which, uh, it, you know, it, it, was, it was a very high energy sort of feel good song, but it had that element of something serious in there as well, you know. Absolutely. And as I say, you know, Hit That Perfect Beat is a kind of, it's kind of my life. So uh, without me even knowing, of course, you don't know. You don't know if you've got it. So there I am doing a job after the after the Bronski beat for about a year, year and a bit or something. I was with them. Um, I, I I decided to go back to work because I had to earn some money. So I, I went and done um, food and food and beverage manager at a hotel in central London. Wow. 
I mean, I could get in at that level because I I studied for it for three years at wow. college. So that was my goal when I was sixteen: and hotel management. So I had that to go back to. So so I was working there for two and a half years. For two and a half years, and yeah. uh, a lot of the time. So you're on it, on it, on it all the time. A phone call comes through one day. It's it's Steve and. Oh, hi, Steve. How's it going? Oh, I want you to come to, um, to New York. I want you to be here on stage with me. We've got the two. And um, so what about it? So I said, OK, you give, me, you, you give me five grand, I think it was. You give me five <laughs> grand and I'll, I'll do it. He said, well, God, OK. So we managed to get five grand. Yeah. Uh, which was nothing really to him because he had quite a lot of money really. No. <laughs> and uh, within 24 hours, I had five grand in my bank. Yeah. So the next day, oh no, the day after, I got on the next flight over to New York and joined him in New York, where we went on this crazy tour of America. Wow. Flying from city to city, and uh, yeah. yeah and was this your first tour? Was it? Was this your first tour? Since? It was the live stuff, yeah. Because right. it was, it was. We'd done all different songs, me and Steve. Uh, you know, we worked together after Bronski B. Really? We were always doing stuff together, and we never lost contact. Oh. Because how you know how the band split up is that, you know, I kind of. Uh, I didn't have another album inside of me with them. Mm. I, I just, I wanted to do other stuff. So, and they, they kind of said, well, okay, we're going to have to let you go. Because mm. I was employed by Bronsky B. I was never Bronsky B. I was, I was just an employee. Oh, wow. So like a weekly wage off of them, off of the Bronsky B. Sure, that's different, yeah. I guess that's probably a better way of doing it, maybe. It it was it it was a it was a good thing for me because if anything happened to the bit the the company of Bronsky B, I would have been liable for their debt. And Steve run up a lot of debt with Bronsky B. <laughs> he didn't care whether he was spending the money or not. Wow. He just didn't yeah, so he was a lot of drugs involved with Steve. Oh, uh, was there? Yeah. So a yeah, lot of partying. And <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh. uh, you know. So we're going across America. We decided, uh, you know, we was in Los Angeles, and going to Los Angeles was also something else. You know, mm. we stayed in Hollywood, and you you just. You just can't believe you're in Los Angeles, and you're just about to do a couple of gigs at this massive gay club yeah. <laughs> and uh, we stayed in this really lovely hotel with a pool and what have you and uh, when when Steve Steve had an argument with the with the uh, with the stage manager our, our manager and he said he wanted us to go to Tampa now Tampa is another nine hours going across America, back down to Florida. So Steve was Steve was going, no, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to stay here for a bit and maybe do some little venues around here and go south of uh, uh, Los Angeles. And they wouldn't have that. So it, it was a big bust up, really, between him and him. And there was a few fisticuffs. No, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, it got really out of hand, and the guy drew a gun on Steve, Brilliant. and I was just standing by the door, and he didn't. He just shook it at Steve like this, and he in, and he ran, and as we, he ran, he bumped into the door, and then the he, the, the gun was dropped onto the carpet, oh. and it was like, what? What's going on? So I was hiding. I couldn't see into the room, yeah. uh, and he just ran off. He just ran off. Because he got some money, he got the money from the gigs that we'd done beforehand. We were only getting a little bit of money through from 
from what he was giving us and, and the expenses, etc. So it was like, well, what are we going to do now? <laughs> so we, we'd got our tickets, which were, he, you know, he, he, we, he had the tickets on the side to go to Tampa. So we went to the airport and uh, we said to the, uh, the, the airline, you know, can we change this for another direction? Sure you can. So we thought, oh, let's go to Hawaii. <laughs> <For a laugh. laughs> Great. <laughs> So there were, there, you know, there's a five of us going. There's five of us in this band. It's not just me and Steve. We have dancers. We have another keyboardist. We have another backing vocalist. Wow. So you know, and it's not just me singing either. Steve singing. Why I'm feeling quite poorly. I didn't feel great when I was in New New York, and I felt kind of sick, really. Um. And um, but but when we got to Los Angeles, I sort of perked up a bit because it was a bit nicer there we could only afford in hawaii to get a cheap room right we didn't quite have all the money it oh. wasn't cheap but you know it was but in the rooms they had slatted windows like this but they were all a bit gappy oh, you no. know so they had gaps on so as we entered as you came out the lift the corridor didn't have walls in so it was just open to the elements, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got into your room and it's like the wind coming through. Honestly, it was just mad, this that hurricane was like... thing that was <laughs> happening. It was, and the palm trees are over like this, you know, it was just uh -huh. so bonkers. What was it like? Was that hurricane season you went Yeah, through? it was a hurricane, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was a bloody hurricane. Yeah, and we landed just before it sort of started. Oh. So. So we did a couple of shows. I was feeling a bit crook, but we did a couple of shows, and it was nice to see Hawaii. It's not. It's it's a bar, bizarre place, Hawaii, because it's kind of Japanese. Really? There's a lot of Japanese there, and you just think, wow, that's that kind of makes sense actually, because you're quite close to Japan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay then. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, not what you expect at first. Yeah. Time. <laughs> so after Steve had gone to the market to buy uh, birds of paradise and a handful of tropical fish to set up a fish tank in his uh, hotel room, <laughs> 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 it was a bit bonkers, really. <laughs> All the time he's sort of taking whatever he's taking. Yeah, I, don't yeah, know. Yeah. I thought I've, we did the gigs. We did a couple of gigs, which was really cool. They were really cool and they really did accept us in a really loving way. Oh. Uh, I mean, we were on for about an hour and a half and uh, we're dressed in, I'm dressed in these really high platforms like this <laughs> with this big black long coat on and my hair's dyed white <laughs> and uh, I'm tottering on, I've got leather trousers on and I think I had a le leather shirt on as well, leather, oh, leather right. t-shirt. So that was my look for, for these gigs. That sounds a good look uh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was really, they were really good. We did a couple and then uh, I think Steve went off and, and done a couple on his own. He didn't mind doing that on his own with just the guitar. Wow. Because, you know, that's the way he rocks, you know, he's, he's yeah. professional. So. so then I was feeling really poorly. So I thought, oh, I've got to go and have a rest somewhere. So I went on the north side of Hawaii, it's called the North North Beach. And um, there, all, all it is is um, surfers. So I ended up in this surfers house with 10 surfers living there. And it was like a, a $5 a night yeah. in this little tiny room where I got really ill. I mean, I went out and, and sort of, I had barbecues with the with the guys, which was very interesting. And they were they were really blown. The, the surfers were really blown away by that they had uh, somebody from Bronsky Beach standing. I bet. Wow. <laughs> by then, by that time, you know, we'd had um, the remix of uh, the dance version done of Hit That Perfect Day. So that went in the Billboard charts, and I think that got to about number fourteen for the. Sure. Yeah, in my own way, I kind of done America. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so you made it in the uh, Billboard charts. What was it, number fourteen? 
something like that. Oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. You, and you also, what was it, the UK, you were number three in the UK singles charts, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So that's really cool, yeah. I suppose it must have been such a whirlwind, the whole experience. It was, you know, you were touring and hitting the charts and it must have just been very surreal for you. Uh, yeah, this, it wasn't happening all the time. I mean, uh, I, I'd I gone back to London and uh, I was, you know, diagnosed with HIV and... Uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, so I was really poorly. I, I, I managed to get out of that place in Hawaii, back to Los Angeles and on a flight back home. Mm. And I thought I've got to go to the doctor because I knew I was HIV, because mm. I was just starting to waste, you know, and it, uh, you know, I just, just knew it. So it wasn't a surprise, the surprise was the cancer when I got lymphoma. So. It was a bit of a drag, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I got over it, thank goodness. And uh, I, I was always in touch with Steve and Larry, and we were always doing stuff together. Right. Um, they were, they did Jonathan Hellier, which he was uh, the third singer, which I thought he did a really good job actually. Yeah, and I... the album, and the album uh, Rainbow something, Rainbow Nation. Uh, I thought it was it was a really good album, but it was he sang in falsetto, which was like Steve always wanted the essence of me. He'd always wanted uh, to get back where Bronsky beat were on a high with uh, Jimmy. He was always striving. What do you uh, get up to these days? Then are you still open for projects? I know we've done a few songs. You've guested on a few of my tracks, which I, I was very grateful for. Uh, Mexico and Future. Um, are you kind of still up for doing that kind this of thing? Fun. Well, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I have a few requests that come through, um, but I've got a few uh, things that I'm working on. I, I'm with a with another friend of mine called Elise, and she, her and I have made a group called Sonic Journey. No. So about three years ago. Uh, I got into Kirtan, which is an Indian Sanskrit mantra, and which is all pretty cool. It very, it's very calming and clearing. And uh, I, I'm, I'm not so into doing pop records as such. In fact, it's very rare that I do do something these days because mm -hmm. other things have take over my life. Like, uh, yeah, like my health isn't isn't great. It's uh, you know, I've got some things happening with my body that isn't really good. Like, yeah. and I, I'm getting old. I had a very, very active life, so I can't complain. I can feel every everything that I've <laughs> that I bumped into when I was young or oh. falling <laughs> off. I can feel it all now. So anyway, wow. <laughs> oh. and with um, you know the uh, the times I used to go to Larry because he moved to Amsterdam. Uh, for quite some time in a beautiful apartment overlooking uh, the canal. It was, it was very lovely. And wow. uh, it was fun to go and visit him and just have a really good time with him and do some music together, sing together. And it was the same with Steve. I used to go and see Steve always singing, uh, you know, always trying to... There's various copies of... Uh, Hit that perfect beat. We did that. Steve and I have done in later years. Yeah, um, I've heard the cocktail. The cocktail version is one of my well, favorites. That, yeah, that's one. That's um, that's done by a friend of ours. So um, it's it's not actually us. Oh uh, well. <laughs> yeah, and we just sent in the vocals, so it was a uh, bit easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. But uh, I, I went on to other things. I went to, I went to, went off and started doing house uh, regeneration. Brilliant. So I bought a house and, and did it up. It was an old Victorian house. So I worked very hard on that. Oh, yeah. Doing things that I, I've learned over the years. So I did, I did, you know, the plumbing, I did plastering, I, you know, I did quite a bit. And wow. So. So we sold that and um, I kind of 
thought, oh, well, I'm not going to do it again. This is going to be it. So now my life is in, is uh, is just not a lot's going on. But Sonic Sound Journey is the company that uh, Alice and I run. And we used to do live sessions on stage with a lot of effects of light and uh, make it very uh, nice for people to come in and lie down. It was never a stand-up concert. Mm. And it's like electronic mantra. Mm. That we used to play drums, gongs, and it was anybody that we knew we would invite to do these little gigs that we had each week in a place called uh, Hampton, no. uh, uh, which is by Hampton Court. And it, it was, it, it's like a community hall, really. And uh, yeah, people got to love it. It was a good experience. And there was a girl called, called Anna who was in us. So there was three, three people in the band. So there's three part harmonies we were doing, which all sounded amazing. It was something completely different. Yeah. And, with back in the electronics, it was it was incredible, but unfortunately, you know, she she left, so it got us into a, a bit of a pickle. But when lockdown happened, we met up with a guy uh, called Derek, and he he introduced us uh, to some hard of learning uh, adults and uh, with many sort of disabled um, problems they have. So we decided to sort of make a show. So every Wednesday for the past maybe two and a half years, we've done this little show for them. For wow. a to, and to get them to sort of maybe do interact with uh, Derek, who's there. We have he's got these pads that are called um, chaos pads, and you can you can do ooh, 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 you know things like that. It's very wow. spacey what he does. That's great. He, he, he let them sort of even if they're trapped in you know just a, a finger on on the thing and they're hearing this this amazing thing there that they're making that not that music you know yeah special I, it's yeah, just I think amazing, great. yeah you're really giving back there i think it's nice you know that you're giving people a chance to really you know see what music's all about people who like you say might might have things that might have stopped them before but you know you've given them a kind of avenue to be creative and kind of you know yeah. music's a very healing thing it's, it's, a, it's a really good worthwhile thing uh, yeah. and it's taken us we've, we've won awards for for our uh, okay. for our little gigs we do and yeah. uh, uh, and also there's been funding uh, from various places so you know, it's, it's 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 all a win-win all around, and we go. We are often maybe once every two or three months, we'd all get together and all do it all together, do the set all together, because the songs are unique. We've written them ourselves, so it's not like we're doing other people's songs. So yeah. and we all we also do sign language. So uh, you know, I'm signing as I'm singing as well. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I'm not brilliant at it, but I can do a few songs with it. So. Yeah, and we do a meditative uh, uh, part in the in the middle of this set. Uh, you know, sometimes I might take them on this journey um, to see a river and floating down the river, and uh, mm. you know, I'm telling them this in a very nice way, and they have to push open this big door and let the light come in. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's a knockout that. They yeah, know. so it's kind of like a meditation almost. That's right. Or we do the Om song, which is like you see the sun shining. I go through things like it's all for you, and um, yeah, it's very good. It's uh, oh. I love doing it. It's, it's great. That's excellent. But yeah. Now and again, you know, I do just I do a song for uh, a Russian uh, couple who were looking for people to, to join on their album. So I wrote a song uh -huh. and uh, they used it on their album, which was kind of oh, good. Okay. I know, they did the music at first. I just had to write the song around this music. Oh. Uh, I just thought, oh, 
Why not? <laughs> yeah, no, that's brilliant. I, I mean, it, I was always surprised when I contacted you originally and asked you if you'd sing on the song, one of my songs, my synth, uh, Future. that was i was really like blown away that you said yes and i was like because <laughs> i i grew up on hit that perfect beat you know and i thought wow i've actually got the singer there singing with me and uh you know uh, to have done two songs with you i really like what you did with mexico Love is the destination of mexico I left you just to do whatever you wanted and you did a real nice sort of backing uh, melody. How do you approach things like that? It, it sort of, uh, because like I said, I left you just to do whatever. What, uh, what's your process? Um, mm, but today was a really good day for creating. A anything that was happening was making up these songs. These songs were coming out of us. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, I guess it's not a process because if you if you put if you think about it too much, it kind of never happens, really. That's true. You miss, you, you miss the inspiration and it kind of goes. Uh, but like today, for example, there was songs just coming out. So if I get a track and I'm hearing it, I, you know, I can I can think these these uh, lyrics and harmonies to think, oh, OK, let's try that then. And I would take quite a long time to get it right. You know, I'd do the verses and I would do different, different variations on the verse until I find it. It's quite complicated. It can take me quite some time to do. Yes, yeah, I I work because I yeah. quite like doing things on the old, uh, on the old computer and sort of, uh, you know, with, uh, with manipulating sounds, etc. Yeah, no, I I was really impressed. I mean, the the kind of because uh, I you kind of captured what I was trying to get with that song, with the Mexico song, with the with the melody, the backing melody. Like it was, you kind of got that kind of almost like come on, come on, that kind of like tropical vibe. Yeah. You managed to capture that, and I I, I really because uh, harmonies is something I haven't really explored that much. But God, when I heard yours, I thought, wow, that's you know you've spot on for what I was trying to create. You know, you kind of. Like you definitely get in the zone kind of thing, you know. It was, cool, that's good. I yeah. enjoyed it. Good fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll I, tell you what was good fun. He's like doing these days, uh, the filming in the park there. Oh, yeah. Honestly, it was just so funny doing it. We were in fits of laughter because I was just, <laughs> you know, as you could see in it, I'm just, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting there, actually. I'm coming through the bushes. And I oh, just, yeah. I don't know what I thought about it really, but it was just we would laugh at that. Yeah, no, I loved it. I loved the the footage actually because obviously you had to try and create the tropical vibe. I was in Mexico and you were in England, but you managed to capture a bit of a. Yeah, that was a good thing. Yeah, yeah. with the camera, with the big leaves. Yeah, it was very yeah, some really nice plants there. That was a really good location. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 good, man, and and uh, 
the thing about it, I just thought, oh, it was just your music was just so out there. And Mexico is just such a brilliant song. Oh. It is such a good song. I, I really love it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate I really that. It. It, it's amazing. It's one of my best songs, I think. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good song, man. you got good oh. song. Lyrics and everything. I like oh, I really I appreciate like the, that. I like the story of it. Yeah, 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 I tried to create that. Yeah, it was kind of, I, I wrote it before I went, funnily enough, but everything kind of fell into place when I was there. Everything I thought would happen kind of did. It was very, uh, kind of manifested the, <laughs> the whole situation, I guess. It was, it was it. It was a weird one, but yeah, I really appreciate you, uh, you know, being on it. Uh, it's one of my pr most proud songs as well. Knowing you're on there, it was quite a, quite, quite a special thing, you know. Uh, well, you know, that's what I do, and uh, I really enjoy it. I, I, oh, my friends will tell you, I'm so sort of, well, I mean, I'm sort of very down to earth with it. So I've lost you briefly there. I think you're coming back. Coming back, coming back. <laughs> coming back. <laughs> You're back with us, John. <laughs> right, so, uh, what was that saying? Yeah, occasionally I kind of meet people who, you know, they I say, and they say that, and if they're much younger than me, maybe 30 years younger than me, <laughs> and I'm chatting to these people in a bar or something, a video, and they cannot believe. That this a the song is brilliant and b it's me there on you know and they they kind of kind of become their best friends oh, oh. Uh, yeah no, i remember which you saying which is really that. nice and i'm just sort of open really yeah. i'm a wise old owl so when I, so when i meet older people like people the same age as me um you know they they when they look at me with a kind of with a with a puzzle so it's like i've seen you before i know who you are but they just can't quite grasp it so they would say you know what you know what do you do and, you know this may be in a hotel or something and uh, when i tell them they can instantly go god you haven't changed a bit and blah blah, blah. Oh. <laughs> and and they and they would talk about it and it, it be even now after all that time that people still like it, that perfect beat and they still you know as you were saying it's a sort of a timeless track that uh, even when i hear it at home and i whack it right up i'm thinking oh yeah that's so good definitely that's so good it's fantastic yeah it's one of those songs i just yeah it's, it, i never get tired of it i'm listening to it when i'm like walking up the shop i'm listening to it when i'm on the bus you know whatever I'm, <laughs> it's always <laughs> blasting <it. laughs> always so, got it. So, it's, it's, I, I mean i hardly ever listen to them really but uh, um every now and again i would like the the the, the video you showed from Italy the other day, I, I had never seen that. And it was one of the best performances I think I've ever done to her. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was Come On, Come On, wasn't it? Come on, release me, baby. Come on, release me, darling. I yeah. was very lively and dancey there and uh, kind of knew what I was doing. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, no, you were really charismatic. I thought, wow, that's like, you've got all the dance moves down and you had a cool yeah. leather jacket thing on. <laughs> yeah i rocked it i rocked it indeed indeed you did, you did yeah definitely if people check out that it's quite new to youtube this one is italy uh, yeah come on come on performances yeah really cool <laughs> worth a watch for sure <laughs> yeah, yeah so, um so i mean i kind of complain about doing any of that what i did um it was an, an amazing experience and it, it's still uh gives me rewards uh to this day you know it's uh i'm blessed with doing that actually i really am yeah no that's lovely i i'm glad it kind of uh it had such an impact on your life and so many others uh like you say you played so many different countries australia you know uh where else was it australia germany france well, we the whole of europe and we did, went over to america and uh you know, we went around the world and uh, yeah. it just took us around the world on this epic journey.
That's amazing, yeah. And with the songwriting, when it comes to writing them, was it were you the main lyricist, or were it was it kind of a all of you were writing words? Well, that's the like as I said, with hit that perfect beat, we created that in a, in a, a kind of rehearsal studio, mm. um, and that kind of just evolved by itself. It had a life of its own. Um, but when we were doing the uh, other songs, it was much more of a uh, it was a different kind of scene for a start, so you kind of get a different feel because there's one part of the album is it's perfectly and the rest of it is uh, is kind of albumy stuff to me that is. And uh, so as we're in the studio and they are playing around with on their keys and uh, trying to form these songs, uh, and then me and Steve would be by the piano and slowly. The, the song, I'd say something and we'd get a trip going and, you know, Larry would participate in saying, oh, that line. He but very, very rarely did on that case, those occasions. Uh, but Steve was my songwriting guy. So me and Steve usually would be sitting down and doing the, um, the vocals. So, you know, half and half, um, third and third. Wow. Yeah, no, that's great. I could see, uh, you know, Steve always, uh, he included a lot, didn't he, within what he was doing, a lot of kind of sounds, which kind of layered it up and it, it all kind of added. <laughs> and yeah, no, it's definitely, a, I mean, I love the, the, the kind of album itself. Here it is. <laughs> that's... Uh, yeah, Steve did all that, you know. That yeah, was uh, that's... Steve's idea. Um, we had it, we had them in different colours as well. So there's... Uh, it's a purple. It's all different purple. Colors. What colours are? Purple. That's purple. Yeah, it's like a purple one, and a yeah. green with the other one. And the green. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I yeah. think they're the most common ones. We did do them in in red and yellow. But oh. I don't know where the blooming hell they they are. No, no, I'm not sure. I've seen, Japan seen. or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Anyway, so and then what was it? Uh, come on, come on was done in a big picture disc. With the little man as the uh, picture disc. That's on right. eBay, by the way. Oh, uh, is it? 15 quid or something. Or oh, maybe yeah. 30 quid or something like no. that. <laughs> That's <laughs> worth, getting, worth getting a copy of for sure, yeah. Yeah, no, I like the uh, the versatility of the album as well. As you mentioned earlier, In My Dreams, that's a really nice song. That's kind of a. I get tired. Yeah, you know. that was that was uh, a song that uh, I first did with uh, with uh, Larry and Steve for the record company in my yeah. dream. So that was going to be the next single after this heart. Um, and by that time, we were going to go on a world tour. So we started this world tour off where we were going to do just go around the world and do this massive gig and we had a huge set set up with um with screens and that in that time it was quite something else to get large screens and, and have a big stage and uh, get some backing singers uh, okay. you know get, get a, a drummer and uh so we had it all set up and then we just, uh, well, it was Steve, he said, I don't want to do it now. Oh, no. <laughs> so yeah. we didn't do it. Uh, so it never happened. Uh, it was on the brink of doing it, but hey. And do you have any... That was the, that was the start with Steve. You know, he could, he could say no to things. No, that's... He didn't want to do it, you know. Yeah. Or he would scream no, actually. And there was one point in the album but I did this song called uh, Black Storm, where, uh, you know, it was quite a dark, it was quite a dark thing. And he didn't like it at all. And uh, now he's going, well, we want it on the album. It's like what we do. So Steve said, no. And if you carry on like this, I'm going to get the lawyers in. Oh, wow. So he went and got the lawyers in after a scrap. <laughs> and uh, so it was changed. Yeah, it was changed. Wow. And, and you it, still... wasn't, 
It was it was to do with Steve and Larry. This it, it wasn't nothing to do with me. It was about them two, really, because uh, they were the thing. I was just the I was just there to write write a little song and yeah. And, and looking back, do you, do you wish that album, that song had been been done or not particularly? No, no. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your? Uh, do you have any really fond memories of Larry or Steve? Anything kind of worth telling us about? <laughs> yeah, too many. I smet- Larry used to live down. Well, they both used to live down the road from me, where I used to live in um, in Cricklewood and Kilburn. I was right on the edge. I had the Kilburn station right outside my front door. Oh, uh... and Steve and Larry was about a few blocks down, maybe about 20 minute walk down. And they, there was Steve uh, in one address and there was Larry a couple of doors up in his flat. <laughs> uh, right. I mean, their their relationship was uh, very up and down, but that was together because they loved each other. You know, they loved each other so much oh. that they, be, they ended up hating each other. Uh. So, so, you know, they would always have bad times. And, and Steve was getting more poorly by the second because he, he you know, he it, something in his head wasn't quite right. He had demons going on. Oh. And, um, you know, it was all to do with the breakup and Jimmy not because it was all to do with down to Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Uh, why Steve, you know, because he fell in love with it. He thought he was going to go. A subsonic, you know. Yeah. Actually, they had to turn down a gig uh, um, supporting Madonna doing uh, an American tour. Well, I think it was wide actually. Uh, but no, they pulled out because wow. because Jimmy Lab. Uh, so they were really it blew Steve away. Actually, it did something to him. Mm. Plus, he used to take lots of uh, lots of drugs, so it didn't help. <laughs> you know, yeah it's, it's pretty crazy yeah. i mean it's like you said earlier it always uh amazes me you know you knew them for so long and kind of uh, i guess you knew them you know really well like with jimmy and you knew him probably as well as you did the rest of them i guess and it's quite quite yeah, it was all down the pub together you know yeah and yeah. i think you said that pub you saw a lot of people didn't you at this pub like to pest mode and did they all go to this pub you used to no, that wasn't the then it was uh when everybody moved from there from no, the no. we had to move because you can't get creative in a place like that at, at that time of uh, uh 1980 whatever it was 1984 or 1985 so every, so we moved to london I, as i said i went to newcastle but they when they were in london they um uh no it was just there we've we've the, everybody sort of just come together like this wow and actually steve found jimmy in a bar and they and steve and larry had these songs going on this music going on and jimmy just stepped into it and just went bang mm. and, uh, yeah. It was, yeah it was really really cool and then they did a, a couple of gigs and then they got signed up yeah yeah that's quite something wow yeah. they did the bell in uh in king's cross which used to be a gay gay bar up there oh. and um yeah, they they played there a couple of times for Stonewall, and uh, they did a lot of uh, active gay. Uh, um, what do you call it? You know, supporting the community. That's brilliant. Yeah, because like you say, it was a time when it was quite uh, difficult, I guess, or a lot of yeah, bands weren't daring enough to do the same. As I say, Jimmy was Jimmy was quite you know sort of go out there and social socialize everything like you, you know uh, turn everything back i mean we were all against the government and what it stood for mm. because we we're all daft punks really mm. and um so you know we we're all family we all sort of we kind of all slept together we sort of you know bath together <laughs> you know yeah. whatever we were all like very good mates but as i say after a while steve and larry went like that oh. and uh, that's why larry had to move 
So he moved to Amsterdam. So, so Larry used to come and visit me and my boyfriend up at uh, Kilburn, up at Cricklewood. And uh, there's one time like, when we'd when we'd start dressing up, doing a dress, dressing up session. No. <laughs> and doing ABBA, singing ABBA in my living room. Oh. With these drapes uh, <laughs> cut from my window. And it's the, it was the most hilarious thing we'd ever done. And I've still got it now on table. I've got all the uh, tapes out the other day and watched it all. Oh, did you? Oh, that's brilliant. It's pretty hilarious. And <laughs> um, um, I, I think I kind of worked myself on that occasion. <laughs> oh. That was just so mad. He was brilliant, Larry. He was such an amazing person. Oh. So he had this, the, he had this such creative mind that he was overflowing with creativity. And uh, so we were always kind of doing mad stuff together. It, yeah, I had, a, I had a good time with Larry. Oh, he was a good mate, year, actually. Oh, that's really nice. But, it's great uh, to be here this year. You know, being in Amsterdam with each other, um, getting stoned over there and just having a really good laugh. And, I bet, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that must have been good. Yeah, he was... It was good stuff, and uh, oh. I miss him actually. Oh. Uh, but the funny thing is, this is a little story. Uh, I was looking on Facebook, and I, I was looking at Larry's page, uh, and I thought, oh, it would be lovely to see him because I hadn't seen him for years, a good few years, and I knew that he was, I knew that he was poorly, uh, and that he he was HIV positive. But I didn't know he had cancer. So mm. anyway, it was like that. So one day he popped up when I was looking at his page and he actually popped up in chat to say, mm. hi, how are you? Uh, uh, and I was like, what? That's really weird. Yeah. So I went, oh, Larry, nice to see you. So good to see you. Let's come on. Let's come on face to face and have a chat. And, and he said, no, not this time. And that was it. He'd gone. Ah, uh, that's so sad. Two days later, he 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 died. Uh. Two days before he phoned, and he was like, I "Love you, I love." So yeah, two days later, passed away. Yeah. So it was very dodgy, actually. It was very weird. I remember there was a, a time when I was in on holiday in the, uh, in the Maldives, actually. <laughs> and uh, it was my birthday and I'd just been diving for the first time in my life on the reef. Right. And uh, when I got out, the waiter came over and said, oh, there's a telephone for you at the bar. So I went to the bar and it was bloody Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I was on this tiny, tiny little island in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. And he phoned me up to wish me a happy birthday. Oh, that's lovely. He was a really lovely bloke. He was, yeah, he, uh, yeah, we loved each other, Steve and I. Oh. It, it was a beautiful thing, yeah. But I just couldn't cope afterwards. I gave him the opportunity to release, hit that perfect beat, but it, he never kind of did. He never kind of got it because he was going into record companies, but he would be pissed and he'd be really like a bit drowsy, a bit stroke. That's the sad thing about it because uh, at the end of life, very, very poorly, I had a stroke. And then he ended up, he's, he, he was just moving and he came out of hospital and he he moved to Soho and there he he was in there for two days and uh, he went up in uh, in in flames. Oh, uh, so, yeah. It was and terrible, we think, yeah. I think what happened is that he passed out in the flat and he just got, uh, you know, 
Yeah, oh, terrible. Oh, terrible, yeah. I can't believe it. When I heard it, I thought, oh, I, it's one of those things you remember where you were when you heard it, you know. I, I remember where I was, and it's just like, it was like, oh, this is just really sad uh, news, you know. Yeah, I couldn't believe it, yeah. No. And Larry's passing too. Uh, uh, that was a bit different because we, we, we kind of got it off the off the TV. And, um, oh, God, I was just so moved and so upset that he'd, he'd gone. Because he never reached out to, for help with anybody, you know. Oh. He was a very private person. Oh, yeah, no, he seemed lovely. He did seem a really nice man. Whenever I see pictures of him, he seemed, you know, really joyful person you know. he was he was a good yeah he was good mate and um uh, and he come from near leon c which was just down the road from me so oh, to meet him in the pub and uh that's where i met most of my friends oh so i i have i've i've i was with them the other week everybody got together uh for a funeral actually and <coughs> and um yeah, we talked about Larry and how, how much he could have fitted in here in this uh, with, with everybody. No, not. So we met up uh, last week for the funeral of my friend Jill's mother. Now, Jill is somebody I've met all my life. You know, I've known all my life. And um, we, we we grew up together in Basildon. Um, we were next door neighbours, so it was uh, a sad time, and it was uh, everybody had to wear red, hence my red hair. Oh. So I surprised them with <laughs> coming in this amazing outfit. So oh. it, cheered, it cheered everybody up. So. So, yeah, so we all got together and it was a lovely, lovely thing to see mates who you've known since you were 17. And uh, everybody was is like a family, really, with uh, with strands that go to Alice and Moye, that go to Depeche Mode, what, what's left of them. And, um, you know, it, it's like a giant spider's web of people who have been active and and that you've met them and they've been on the road of entertainment or you know anything like that yeah the creative world so i'm blessed with that that's wonderful yeah and talking of alice and moya you um you did a lovely version of only you didn't you um looking from a window above it's like a story of love I did, yeah. I just, that was just a bit bored uh, one one day, and I decided to do that. But, uh, you know, uh, yet again it, from a friend whose voice, as I explained before, but she she was, uh, yeah, she was something different. Was uh, Alice Moya? Definitely, yeah. In the old days, we used to call her Alf. Uh, she used to wear these really heavy black coats. You know, you'd like it, and these really like heavy DMs. You know. Yeah, nice. She was a bit of a goth, goth. That's really cool. A punk, a punk goth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no, a good look. Yeah, I've always, I've always loved her voice as well. I've always thought it's such a unique voice, you know. Uh, and uh, your uh, your version of that song's really nice, and the video I thought was really effective. That was really. Yeah, I think because we come from the same area, our voice, you know, we've been, you know, when people I've worked with, they always say, oh, you've got a little touch of Moye there. So I think it's a little touch of Basil doing this you know? Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. That's that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, it's been great to have you on, John. I appreciate you taking the time to chat. Okay, well, I hope this is cool and... Uh... For sure. All right, cool. All so right. Take care and see you Thank you.
Love!